What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post game recap. This is going to be a fun one because we get to talk about a win and not just a win, probably the most complete game the Seattle Mariners ball cup has played this season as they defeat the Cincinnati Reds tonight, nine to three. The Mariners improved to seven and 10 on the young season, and I am going to break it all down. Before I do, do me a favor. Hit that like button, it helps out the channel and the video tremendously. And if you're new here, hit subscribe. I've reached 3,000 subscribers, continuing to climb. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given my channel. Truly means a lot to me that this many people care to listen to what I have to say um, about this team. So thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, these series previews and these post-game recaps. Like I said, top to bottom, best game the Mariners have played all season. Uh, the pitching was phenomenal. The offense scored and then didn't let up. We've seen a couple games where the offense has put up some numbers. I'm putting that very kindly, but it's kind of all been in one inning. Like Toronto, they score six runs, but five of those came in one inning, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it was nice to see them get a lead early and continue to add on throughout the game. We've seen times where this team can get some runs early um, and even go back to last year and past years, and then they just kind of fall apart and don't add on. And it looked like that might happen for a little bit, but they continue. They scored a couple in the third, sixth, and a handful in the seventh uh, to keep adding on to that lead. So like I said, really just top to bottom, the most complete game for the Mariners this year. This looked like a playoff team tonight, maybe for the first time this year. That doesn't mean there haven't been individual performances that have made them look like a playoff team. Logan's throwing the ball very well. Kirby in his first game. There's been some moments, but this game, first inning to ninth, was a game that they looked like a team that could compete for a playoff spot, maybe for the first time this year, which listen, despite some of the struggles early seven and 10, I mean, they're a game and a half out of first place or something like that right now. So, you know, listen, if you can hang in there and hopefully maybe this is the start here, you know, maybe this is going to be the series. They get that series. win, then you go to Colorado, I'm getting ahead of myself here. It should just be one game at a time. Let's just enjoy this one tonight, but maybe this can springboard something for this team. They certainly have been off to a slow start, but they're not buried. They are not buried by any means. They didn't start, you know, three and 13 or anything like that, where they really need something to pull themselves out of it. They just need to keep winning series. Keep, I say all the time, you need to start winning series. They don't just sweep. But if you can get two out of three, two out of three, two out of three, you know, you're going to get back to 500 and then boom, take off from there. Let's start with the pitching. Then we'll break down the offense today. George Kirby was solid, six innings, five hits, two runs to earn, no walk, six Ks. Did give up the home run to who got Fraley didn't hit it off. Fraley hit it off Spire. Who did who hit the home run off Kirby? It was Candelario. Jamer Candelario hit the home run off Kirby. Nice bounce back start from George Kirby. Had a couple rough outings against the Blue Jays and against the Guardians. So really good to see Kirby get back in the groove, throwing strikes. Um, threw a lot of pitches in the first inning, actually got to some three ball counts, but settled in, um, especially in the middle innings, you know, kept, kept the Reds at bay. You know, one of the runs scored on a check swing double from Jake Fraley. I'll never hate Jake Fraley. He was one of my beard idols. So, you know, hats off to Jake Fraley, but, you know, check swing went over the head of Rojas for a double scored a run. You know, listen, that's just kind of fluky stuff. Mariners did enough to you know, balance that out. So it's whatever, but um, really good outing from Kirby. Of course, no walks. Like I said the six strikeouts was good to see. And yeah, j just a really, really solid outing and nice to see. Talked about it yesterday, a little bit in the live stream. I haven't had haven't, the Mariners pitcher starting pitchers have not pitched with a lot of leads this year. Um, you know, Bryce Miller in Milwaukee was probably the only one where there was a somewhat substantial lead. I know Logan had a lead for a little bit in Toronto, but one nothing, which is a lead, your margin for error is is zero. Um, you know, so that that makes it a lot tougher. The Mariners go out and score some runs, and George Kirby is able to keep the Reds at bay and get the W tonight. So outstanding start from George Kirby. Nice bounce back from him. Luis Castillo looked better yesterday. Not perfect, but much better. You know, he generated twenty three swings and misses last night. Kirby again today, no walk, six Ks. Now you turn it over to Logan Gilbert. And that's where this team should be very powerful. You know, if the offense, I don't expect nine runs every night, but the offense kind of has a game like they did. You've got a big three for starting pitching. Hopefully yesterday was the turnaround for Castillo. Kirby much better today. Logan tomorrow, you string together some W's. That's the goal for the team. 
Gabe Spire pitches an inning, uh, one strikeout, gave up the sole home run again to the beard idol, Jake Fraley. Um, you know, if the mayor is going to win nine to three. I can allow my, my boy, Jake Fraley to have a couple hits and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I, I'm not going to get too much on the home run. It was six to two. You know, when you got a six, two lead, you're going to come in, pump some fastballs. You know, it's walks will drive you more crazy in those situations and home runs. Spire gets through the inning just fine after that. So good to see, uh, Tyson Miller throws a shutout inning very quick. And then how about Sauce? Taylor Saucedo strikes out the side in the ninth inning. I thought earlier in the year, earlier, like we're not still early, but in the first week or so, uh, Saucedo didn't look very good. Breaking balls didn't have a lot of bite to him. Um, I just didn't think he looked very impressive. His last few outings, um, the one in Milwaukee, and I don't know if he pitched since then, to be honest. Um, but then tonight here against the Reds, really, really solid. So good to see Sauce kind of falling back into 2023 Taylor Saucedo, which can be a valuable arm in the bullpen. And hopefully with this team winning more games, maybe tonight's the start of it, you're going to need some guys. Because, you know, I talked about it yesterday that I can't really point to Brash and Santos coming back to help the team because their struggles haven't been blowing late leads. It's been the offense. But in games like this where you've got the leads, you know, you will be in close games and hopefully need this bullpen to step up. And we've seen Gabe Spire do it. Stanek's been solid. Munoz, still good. If you can get Sauce in that group as well, it's just going to make that bullpen that much longer. And then get Brash and Santos back and really kicking into gear here. So good to see Sauce was fantastic. George Kirby was fantastic. Uh, pitching all around was absolutely fine tonight um, and deserved the W that, that they got. Let's talk about the offense finally breaking out a little bit. Listen, we know the offense is better than what they've shown through 16 games. Doesn't make it any less frustrating. And one game does not eliminate all of the frustrations either. But this was a lot more like it. And a game that they just needed. They needed something like this. And I think everybody contributed today. J.P. Crawford, the only guy that didn't have a hit. Um, he did have a walk. He let off the game with the walk. Uh, Julio, um, well, let me talk about that inning for a bit, minute. Um, J.P. leads off the game with a walk. Julio works that walk. And then Jorge Polanco, it's the three-run home run. You know, kind of the opposite of yesterday. They actually had some nice at bats and hear me out late in the game, but they just couldn't get the big hit, right? Like they were working walks in the seventh and eighth innings. They were getting on base, which is great. You got to do that. Walks and singles are fine, but someone's guy said it. Someone's got to put one in the gap and bring these guys home. And tonight it was Jorge Polanco. JP walks in the first Julio walks. Then Polanco steps up and hits the three run home run, uh, sets the tone right away. Three batters into it. You've got a three nothing lead forces Frankie they force Frankie Montas to throw 45 pitches in the first inning so you know the approach worked and, and that's the thing you work the count get on base the issue for the Mariners hasn't so much been that not that they've been doing great at getting on base but they just have not had somebody step up and deliver that big hit and then the key was they didn't allow Montas to settle in Mitch Hanniger gets the two-run home run Nick Martinez comes in and eats up some innings for the Reds he pitches four innings and then uh Buck Farmer pitches two innings so the bullpen didn't get destroyed for the Reds um it would have been nice if you could really run through a whole bunch of pitchers but when Martinez goes four innings there's not much you can do they didn't do much against him but they did add three against Buck Farmer so you know either way still good to get into that Reds bullpen a little bit in game one and uh force them to use a couple arms there so JP 0 for four at the walk Julio won for four, two runs scored and a walk, had that base hit in the seventh, I believe, uh, in the three-run seventh. Listen, Julio still putting in some bad swings against inside fastballs. Teams are just hammering him inside. Um, he laid off a couple sliders in that first at-bat against Montas. Now, that was good to see. The base hit was good to see in a walk. I, I, I'm right now taking you know anything in a walk and a hit is good. Julio still without an extra base hit since opening day. and. Like I said, teams just pounding him inside, and, and he's either got to just he's got to spit on those a little bit more, even if they're borderline. Like, listen, if someone dots the corner on three pitches on the inside corner, sometimes you tip your cap. You know, if they can do three in a row right there, it is what it is, but you just can't keep swinging at those. I mean, listen, on base twice in five at bats, that's a 400 OBP for the day. So Julio was okay today. 
It just would be nice, again, to see the slugging come out a little bit for Julio Rodriguez. Not going to harp on that too much because, again, great day for the offense. But, um, you know, good to see at least that they did this without JP and Julio um, really contributing a ton necessarily. I mean, again, Julio on base twice, JP on base once. But um, hopefully, you know, with some other guys maybe turning around a little bit tonight, maybe JP and Julio uh, will be next. Jorge Polanco is absolutely breaking out now. Um, after a bit of a slow start, he's upped his OPS in the year 694. I think in the last week or 10 days, he's running like a 150 WRC plus. Jorge Polanco has absolutely arrived for the Seattle Mariners. Um, and like we've had some bad luck with some of these second base acquisitions recently. Polanco looks like he's going to be the guy to change that. One for three for Polanco, the three run home run and two walks on base three times today. Absolutely outstanding to see Polanco. Yesterday had the two-run home run as well against the Cubs to give the Mariners a little life. And today in the first inning smacks a three-run home run that sets the tone and carries the team to a victory. So fantastic, fantastic to see from Jorge Polanco. Um, I've talked about how, you know, the stars need to be stars. And I've thrown a few guys under the bus, not under the bus, but I talk about JP, Julio, Cal, you know, the, Mitch Garver. These guys have got to start stepping up. I had Polanco in there early. Polanco's now out of that group. He is he is into the he's producing category now. Mitch Hanniger, two for three. He had the home run, a base hit, and a walk. So Hanniger on board three times tonight. Good to see him, DH, kind of get that half day off. Um, I think Mitch Garver absolutely needed the day off today to get him right. I wouldn't be surprised if Hanniger, well, I don't want to say he should get tomorrow off because he got kind of that half day off today. He's been swinging the bat well, but I do know they want to keep Mitch Hanniger healthy. So wouldn't be totally shocked if Hanniger gets a day off in there. And then, you know, Wednesday, you've got Abbott, the lefty. So maybe tomorrow, but with the way Mitch swung it tonight, it's going to be hard to keep him out of the lineup. Um, great to see. I mean, that home run was perfect. Classic Mitch Hanniger into left center field. Um, you know, the, the walk again. So, I mean, Hanniger just really, we talked about, you know, veteran leadership with Gino being gone. Who would be the guys to step up? I think having a guy like Mitch Hanniger in that clubhouse helps tremendously. He looks healthy. He looks comfortable at the plate. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like I was excited to have Mitch Hanniger back and I was fine with that trade, but I was a little bit nervous. This guy's missed a lot of time and wondering if maybe it's just not going to work out. And you know, it, just in the offseason, you have those thoughts like eh, love Mitch, but how good will he be? And listen, we're only 17 games in, but so far return on investment um, has been outstanding and it is really, really nice and just feels right having Mitch Hanniger back into this Mariners lineup. Ty France was one for three with an RBI. The RBI was on a sack fly. Did ground into a double play in the first inning. Really good to see Ty having that double down the line. Made me feel a little better. Ty was kind of dropping back into the slumps a little bit. If you looked at his Savant page prior to the Cubs series, um, I haven't looked at it since, but it was a lot of red, barreling things up, finding the sweet spot. Hard hits were there. Um, and then I thought he had kind of a rough series against the Cubs outside of, I think, an RBI single he had in the first game and then the double play again tonight to start it. So I was starting to get a little bit back into the, Ooh, what do we got here in Ty? One hit doesn't change everything, but it was really good to see him get that double and then elevate the ball for a sack fly. Would have been nice to have that yesterday in that eighth inning at bat, but um, you know, it is what it is there. And just, it, that was good to see. That extra base hit was really good to see from Ty. It kind of one of those hits that makes you go, if you're Ty, get a good night's sleep and, and you feel good. Cal Raleigh was one for three. He also walked. So Cal on base twice tonight. Um, that's good to see Luke Rayleigh. How about Luke Rayleigh? Two for four with an RBI triple. Had a great bunt single in the first inning. Perfectly placed down the third base line. And that triple, man, Luke Rayleigh can fly. He is fast for a big dude. Um, that ball did not get far past Will Benson in center field. Um, solid stroke too. uh, 670 expected batting average, um, over 90 on the exit VLO on that line drive from Luke Rayley and Benson kind of went to die for a great, great effort by Benson. And it, it didn't get past him. Like it didn't roll the wall or anything like that. Had it done that, I think that might've been an inside the park home run. Um, it just got past Benson a little bit. Rayley just turned on the jets. Um, base running has been really good from Luke Rayley. Defense has been solid. He's going to get a lot of at-bats now, right? With Dom Canzone being out, you know, he should get the majority of the playing time would be my would be my guess. So good to see him check in with the RBI and two hits. Fantastic to see. 
Um, I like Luke Rayleigh. He's kind of been forgotten. I know he had a tough spring. I know some fans have been frustrated wishing he'd be playing more. I, I'm with you. I'd like to see him get more at-bats starting tonight. I wish it didn't take the Canzone injury, but it was tough, right? It is a bit of a crunch out there because Canzone was, you know, team leader in OPS+, plus, I think team leader in WRC+. Plus. Going into yesterday, he's been hitting the ball with some pop, starting to walk a little bit more. You know, you're not going to bench him. Mitch Hanniger has been hot, and, and you're not benching Julio, at least – not for an extended period of time, maybe for a game or two to get right. But Julio is your, you know, franchise player. And then Ty's actually been swinging the bat pretty well at first. So there just hasn't been a ton of opportunity for Luke Rayleigh. Um, and again, I don't like that it's coming at the expense of a can zone injury, but uh, good to see. And hopefully some more playing time, more consistent at bats will continue to help Luke Rayleigh. Congratulations to Jonathan Colosse. Um, One for four with an RBI single, his first, Major League hit for Jonathan Klasse. Um, really, really, you know, good. just good to see. Take away anything else. Anytime you see a young man get his first hit, you see the smile on their face. You remember that at the core of it, this is a kid's game, and it's meant to be fun. So that is always, always fantastic to see. Outside of his strikeout in his last at-bat, I thought Klasse had some decent at-bats. Um, not going to lie, his first at-bat actually initially when he hit it, I thought he got it. There were some fans in the back that kind of stood up that made it look like it was maybe a little more well hit than it was. Um, his second at bat almost had a bloop single, but just a ridiculously good play by Ellie Dela Cruz. So smooth the way he came in and dove for the ball, caught it. I mean, just smooth. That's the way I'd say it. It was just that is an incredible play by Dela Cruz. Not that Classe hit that ball hard, but he was robbed there of a bloop hit. I thought he looked pretty solid. I I I liked what I saw. His approach looked good, put the ball in play. The speed is definitely legitimate, looked good in the outfield. I will say this, with Rayleigh in right, Julio in center, and Klasse in left, your outfield defense has taken a huge step forward, you know, compared to Canzone in left and Hanniger in right. Love me, Mitch Hanniger. Love me some Dom Canzone. But your outfield defense is better with Klasse and Luke Rayleigh um, out there along with Julio for sure. So nice debut for Klasse. Now he gets his first hit, gets his first RBI. And I, I thought he looked pretty solid. It, 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 he didn't look overmatched. You know, sometimes it's just, you know, we can look at the numbers, but sometimes there's just that eye test. And watching Klaus say he did not look like the moment was too big for him or anything. So hopefully he can continue to get at-bats, get playing time, and make an impact for this team. And if he can make enough of an impact, you know, he'll stick on this roster. Josh Rojas won for four. Um, he had a double that just missed a home run. He also stung a ball in his first at-bat, I think, in the second inning uh, that was caught in center field, I believe. Rojas continues to be solid. Um, WRC Plus coming into tonight was 144. Probably going to go down a little bit, uh, you know, just being one for four today. But a couple balls well stung. You know, Rojas has been solid. And, and listen, I, I will continue to say I didn't like the Eugenio Suarez trade just because it was a salary dump and what you got back is, you know, a live arm that, can't really throw strikes. I like Vargas, but you know, he's got to find the strike zone and you know, God bless Seve Zavala. I'm sure. He's a good guy, but just not great so far at least, but I will say Rojas and Urias are kind of holding down that third base. Um, you know, my take on the Gino thing was always this. I, I'm not, and, and I, I'm, I'm sure I've I know I repeat myself in these things, but new subs. I just, you know, want people to know my thoughts on it. And listen, like I say, if you're going to talk about every game, you're going to repeat talking points. I didn't mind trading Gino and Jared Kelenic. Totally fine with that. I just didn't like the return and that it was just pure salary dump trades. I can understand, like I said, Marco, Evan White, fine. Salary dump those guys. Not a problem with that. I think Gino and Kelenic are a little bit more valuable than just getting them off the books, essentially. Um, but I don't have a problem with them being traded. And like I said, Rojas is holding down third base uh, pretty well so far. And Urias has been fine. Um, you know, the throwing arm still leaves a little to be desired, but I think Rojas's defense overall has been decent. Is it Gino? No, we've also been really spoiled at third base with Gino, Kyle Seeger, Adrian Beltre. I know we had a little Jose Lopez in the middle there. I don't know what the metrics graded Lopez Lopez as at third, but we've been pretty spoiled the last 20 years. So I, I think Rojas has overall been, been fine defensively. Great win for the Mariners, Just a, a win we needed, right? Yesterday was so frustrating. So frustrating. I talked about in the stream that that game drove me nuts. 
good to see them come out against a, a Reds team that I think is a good ball club. You get that first win. George Kirby solid. Back to the George Kirby of last year. The offense clicks today. Not only do they get the runs, they continue to add on. They do it with the long ball. They do it with some base hits. They do it with some walks. I mean, just, you know, all around, just a perfect, perfect uh, played game by the Seattle Mariners. You know, the only thing left is getting JP and Julio going. Not, I'm not claiming they're, they're just back now and the offense is totally fine. Um, the overall number is still frustrating. But man, if you could get JP and Julio going along with what we saw today, you're going to be in good shape and this team's going to win some more ball games. So chance to win a series tomorrow. They haven't done it yet this year. Got Logan Gilbert on the mound. Have to feel pretty good. Logan give you a quality start and maybe the Mariners can get that first series win of the year. Listen, they're seven and 10. Do I love the start? No. Do I think they've looked great outside of tonight? They did overall. No, but like I said earlier in the video, they're not buried or anything like that. You got a chance to win the series tomorrow, get to a couple games under 500 and then let's go. You know, you're, you're inching to 500 and we're still just, you know, getting on 20 games into this season. There's a lot of baseball left. Just don't bury yourselves. Don't get, you know, seven and 15, seven and 16, where you're close to double digits under 500. You can hang around the 500 mark for a month. You can take off from there. Um, I, I hope they'd be better. Like, I, I hope they get well above 500, but they're not buried. And tonight was a good win. Hopefully they can use that as a catapult for some better play. And this team gets gets going a little bit in 2024. It's about time, right? We, we've sat through some tough games. Let's get rolling. Nice W tonight. Guys, remember to hit that like button, hit subscribe, go to SeatGeek, download the app or go to their website. If you're going to a game, use promo code JS Trident for $20 off your next purchase. Um, real quick, I, I want to ask you guys, you can let me know in the comments down below if there's something you'd be interested in. Um, if you're, I'm done with the Mariners, so if you don't care about anything else I'd say, you can click off the video, no problem. Um, if you've hung on this long, I appreciate it. Um, as you guys know, I'm an Arizona Coyotes fan. Um, people that have asked me how, obviously grew up living in the Washington area, no hockey team there, had family in Arizona, just sort of adopted the Yotes as my hockey team as a kid. So they have been, that's, those have been my guys. Um, super pumped when Seattle got a hockey franchise. So super excited for Seattle fans to have the Kraken. Um, but the Yotes will be leaving. They'll be going to Salt Lake City next year. Um, I will not root for that. Um, I, I like the players. I wish them all the best. I will not be supporting the team in Salt Lake City. Just can't do it. Now, I'm not, the Coyotes are not what the Mariners and Seahawks are to me. Let me be very, very clear about that. Um, they're my third. Like, they are, I, I'll be okay. I'm, I'm going to get over it. But I'm thinking of doing a live stream for the Coyotes final game. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Um, was that something you tune in for? Um, it might be just a personal thing for me that I want to do to say goodbye to my team. Um, so I guess even if you guys aren't interested, I might do it. I am not good at hockey play by play. It is a really tough sport to do play by play for. So it might not be pretty. It might just be a little watch party and a farewell. But if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. And I will try to do that Wednesday night um, as my Yotes say goodbye. And I will say goodbye to them. I'm still going to root for the players. I respect them, but I will not be supporting the team in Salt Lake. Sorry for that rant. Just want your guys' thoughts on that. That's something you think would be kind of fun to do. Other than that, like I said, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and have a great night, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow night for the post-game recap. Go Mariners. Win a series. Come on. Let's win a series tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. Go Mariners. Peace.